a question today is is life temporary or eternal you know the life we live today is a temporary life that's the only way to make sense of what's going on there is another world there is another life there is ages to come and that's what's indicated in the bible i say this because i see a lot of people struggling and frustrated and um, waylaid by the world. You look at all the people who die, you know, a fellow in my town died over, over the last week or so, he was stabbed, you know, and he had a great job, he had great friends. He's a big, strong, uh, happy-go-lucky guy. I mean, so many people are coming out and saying great things about him. And he was stabbed by this woman that he randomly came across in a dark parking lot. I don't know what happened. Was he trying, you know, he pulled into the parking lot with friends, gets out of the car, and she stabs him. The words were exchanged. Was he trying to, you know, pick her up or something? I don't know. Uh, but my point is, it just, you know, I keep thinking about how his life was over he's in the ambulance they said he was in pain and he he, he he was screaming in the ambulance you know and what i'm thinking what's going through his mind and you know it could, that could be any one of us anything could happen right you know, how many times life's i was just watching a a truck on a highway this is on youtube and he you know how tra traffic will back up and the cars coming from behind have to slow down. Well, that's what was going on. It happens a million times a day. But this one truck, he was going too fast. And I don't know what the heck happened, but he hit the car in front of him and he kept going. He, it's like he didn't even hit the brakes. He hits another one, hits another one, hits another So nine people were hospitalized, but one person died. And this car got just completely smashed. Then he got smashed into uh, another car. There's no way you could say I mean, so life can be over just like that, right? So my point is that this world is temporary. And there's a permanent world ahead. To think that this world is all there is, is... A lie, basically, you're falling for a lie. You you might not be, you know, lied, lying t purposely to yourself, but you're falling for a lie in light of all the information we have available to us. You're not being allowed to look at one side of the coin. And that's unfortunate. I don't know how you can call yourself educated if you've never been able to examine the Holy Scriptures for yourself. And that, in my opinion, didn't have, well, it's the most important thing you have to do. You have to do it with a clear head and without any prejudices and without any um, vested other interests, like say corporate America or a job or friends, you almost have to kill off all those things to be able to read the word. And then you also have to kill off all of um, the slandering that takes place. Um, and if you ever get to that point where you're willing to give the Bible a fair hearing for yourself, you'll be amazed at what you find. It happened to me when I was 27. I had basically not really um, had a great job that, you know, I had a great job, but it, and it gave me money. And it, you know, I worked for the post office and I didn't have to fit into the world. I could just go to work. And I was getting tired of the, you know, the whole world anyway, the whole world, like, you know, the Bruins, the Red Sox, the Patriots, the Celtics, that whole cyclical thing where you just, keep getting absorbed and your mind is consumed 
by the the all that shenanigans that goes on in sports it's it's fascinating and on a certain level and you want to root for the home team you end up getting vested so heavily into these sports that you your mind doesn't see anything else that's a subtlety that can happen to us and i'm sure it ha it's an idol it's what the bible calls it a false idol but you think you you're winning because it's sports it's fun you know you want to have fun in life you know but you know in this television a very powerful medium television is quote unquote the chief glorifier of man now that's that's a term used to describe god okay so tv is basically competing with god so it's like the nfl and and they're competing with god they've actually come out and you know there's been um i'm not the first one that made made that uh this, you know observation so my point is that you have to sweep all these things aside clear the table clear the deck then maybe you know and then the other thing is you have to be disappointed by these other idols that are out there okay and then maybe you'll be able to examine now that being said just one word from the bible can save you okay a word like jesus all right the word is powerful and active and it's um the word of god it's life the bible says it's life these words are life and it's good news see that we're, we're conditioned by these other um influences to think that it's bad news and you know a lot of people you know in your family might tell you it's bad news but the bible's got a message of good news believe and be saved all right how how awesome is that that's all you got to do is believe you know you believed in the red sox you believed in the bruins you believed in the the patriots and you believed in the celtics well believe in jesus jesus will love you back these other things will not love you back all right but in 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 a sense god gives you that faith anyway because the word of god does not return void and goes through from God's mouth into the world and goes into our ears and impacts our will, freeing the will in our heart to to believe. I was going to read Isaiah 55, and it's the Lord speaking. Verse 1 says, Come all you who are, you who are, you who are thirsty. Come all you who are thirsty. It's So if you really have to have that thirst. Come to the waters. You know, come to the word of God. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. There's hope for everybody, okay? Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. You can get drunk on God. You can, you can, I don't know what, what that scripture uh, really means. Why spend money on what is not bread? You know, why, why get into these idols that don't return anything to you why in your, why spend labor on what does not satisfy okay this is isaiah 55 verse 2 listen listen to me this is the lord speaking in the old testament and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest affair Okay, so eat what is good and you'll have nutrition. You know, the Bible has nutrition, spiritual food, spiritual nutrition. Give air and come to me. So he's telling you to come to him. Come to him. This is a command from God Go, going out and telling you to come to him. Hear me. So hear the word of God for yourself that your soul may live. That's the consequence. You'll live forever. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you do not know and nations that do not know you will hasten to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor god could do amazing things through your life 
And, and one soul is worth more than the whole world. So all these nations are nothing compared to one soul. Your soul is that important. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. See, that's a command from God coming to you, going to your ears, into your heart, free in your will, telling you to seek the Lord. Because no one seeks the Lord other, you know, otherwise. But the word of God is telling you to seek. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord. See, we're all wicked. But, you know, when you wake up and see, you know, that there is a God, then you can start to cultivate that relationship. But this, again, is the word of God going forth, telling you what to do. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God. For he will freely pardon. See, we all need a pardon. We all need a pardon. You know, it happens once. And it covers all your sin. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. Declares the Lord. This is a key scripture in the Bible. And um, it's Paul references it in, 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 um, in, in the New Testament. And... You know, this is, a, um, you know, we don't understand God totally. You know what I mean? He's given us uh, evidence of who he is, and he, written, he had it written down for us. But we don't understand the why everything happened, okay? But it's for good. So that's verse 8. That's a very famous line. It's followed up by... As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. As the rain, and that's a very famous verse I use in a lot of my um, videos. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the... For the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but I will accomplish what I desire. Now, I don't say all that, but I hit the last line there. The word of God going forth, not returning void, accomplishing God's work. And achieve the purpose which I sent it. See, it's all about God's purpose, God's will. The word of God's going forth. Accomplishing God's will. You will go out in joy and be led in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree. And instead of the briars, myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's glory or renown for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. So that's Isaiah 55. Glad I was able to read that. I opened up to it today. I hope you receive it. And that's a, a demonstration of the word of for, for word of God illuminating your life. You know, giving you some soul food. Okay, just go to Isaiah 55. And uh, you, know, you can get a cross-reference Bible and you can see where the scriptures are reiterated and in, in, in referenced in the New Testament. So that's my word for today. This world is temporary, but there's an eternal world, okay? We have eternal life the moment we believe. <laughs> you can tell I just woke up, I guess. But this is this is scripture, you know, I'm saying to myself, I was just gonna go right to work, but I get up to like a 13, 14 hour day ahead of me. And I was like, you know what? I gotta sit down and try to keep some momentum going. Cause I remembered yesterday saying to myself, you should do something about temporary versus eternal because i'm out there in in you know driving around and just getting a sense of the pulse of the people and they're driving so crazy and and i really sense that they have to see that this is a temporary life 
Somebody has to tell them this life's temporary and there's an eternal life that we could be had today. You know, we're citizens of heaven, but there's an eternity ahead of us. There's ages to come. That, you know, you can do a study on that. Look up ages to come. It says that a couple times in the Bible. All right. So that was Isaiah 55. Isaiah in the book of Isaiah, which is Old Testament. You know, it's part of the Septuagint, which was translated into Greek from Hebrew by Alexander the Great. 300 years before Christ, which, you know, is an object, I say this every video, it's an object, objective, objective benchmark in history for anyone to look at. And even the critics have to admit, Alexander the Great lived before Jesus. So we have a, a lot of proof. Now, we, we have a tendency not to want to admit that because we think the gospel's bad news, but the gospel's good news because Jesus did all the work. He stood as a proxy in your place, you know, and, and he uh, paid the price for your sin. And we just got to believe we, we're reconciled to God. We're redeemed to God. You know, none of this um, making a deal with God when we die, you know, and hoping our good deeds are way or bad deeds. You could even, you know, there is no one who does good. No, not one. Your good deeds are actually filthy rags. That's what the Bible says. If you're going to throw your good deeds out there and say, I should get to heaven because of my good deeds, God's, God has an answer for that. He says, that's those deeds are filthy rags. You're ignoring what I did on the cross. And you're going to try to make a deal with me with the good, with, with the filthy, with your filthy uh, rags, the, the good you're gonna you, you, at that point you're gonna have to be 100 percent perfect 100 percent of the time because you're saying your good deeds are good enough to outweigh your bad deeds but god's gonna hit you with the law and say you have to be perfect if you're gonna use those standards only jesus was perfect if you're gonna try to you know make a deal with god based on the ten commandments you have to be 100 percent perfect 100 percent of the time it's called being judged by the law and nobody is and that's why your deeds, are, they might as well just be filthy rags, your good deeds, you know. They might as well be filthy rags, you know, when in light of the fact that Jesus is sitting over here and he, he, he's standing on the right hand of the Father, he's been resurrected for 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 sitters. And, and you have to get your pardon. We just read, get your pardon by faith. Believe in Jesus You'll be saved. You cross over from death to life in one moment. You don't have to worry about your good deeds outweighing your bad deeds anymore, okay? Get rid of that scale. Embrace Jesus. Get born again. Get spiritually, you know, it takes a spiritual awakening to see that these words of spirit and life, they can do the job. They can open your eyes. The scales of your eyes fall off. And you are saved. I think I said enough right there. That's all you really need to say, you know, is, you know, your, your deeds. You know, the, the Bible says in vain, a man gets up early in the morning. If he, he rejects Jesus, in vain he does, gets up early, water works all day. It's, a, it's you can, you can spend your whole life doing that. And people do. If you are rejected Jesus, there's no way you can get into heaven. Jesus, God, the flesh came down and provided a way for you to get to heaven for free. All you're going to do is believe. And if you're going to try to make a deal with God based on some other way, it, you know, based on your own quote-unquote goodness, and even those good news, goodness is, is, is probably suspect anyway by ulterior motives, you, you know, you just can't compare to what Jesus did for you. So, you know, the, the scriptures say, uh, you know, if we regret if we forsake such a salvation as this have if, you know heaven forbid if we do you know or something like that <laughs> all right so that's what i got for you today i hope you see what i'm trying to say to you is is um this life's temporal we have eternal life but we can have eternal life in a te temporary situation which is a that's another thing to acknowledge here is you can, I think I hit on it, but you can say you have eternal life and still live in this temporary tent. Paul calls it a, t a tent, you know, 
and, and he he longed for being with Jesus, you know, but he he was recognizing that he was in a temporary tent. <laughs> So there's a contrast here that I'm trying to uh, illustrate. And I hope, uh, you know, the word got out and, and you can uh, even, you can consider this, all right? It's important. This is important stuff. Uh, this is how you get to heaven. Just believe in Jesus and you, you're saved. That one word can save you, Jesus. Jesus is, a, is, is in the salvation business, saving souls, all right? And we're just out here giving out a message. We're not saying, you know, you got to be perfect. You got to clean up your act in order to get qualified. You, you know, you know, you, you have to repent, meaning rethink who Jesus is in, in light of your situation. And then, you know, and at that same moment, you're believing, you know, so it's almost a synonymous term. But, of course, the church twists it around, you know, and then they and then, then once you're saved, they 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 condemn you too. So I'm, I'm not, you know, churches are very in the, con con you know, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. But the churches are into condemning very subtly. <laughs> They'll never admit it. But that's what's going on. So, all right. We're going to sign off. And I bid you do have a great day. Have a, you know, this is the 18th of September. The Lord could come back today. You know, the rapture. Watch my other videos last couple of days. It could, Jesus, the second coming of Christ, it could happen. It's imminent. You know, you look around the world, it makes a lot of sense. So I'm I'm kind of motivated to give these videos out in the last few few days. And I, I've been away for a while, but all right, we'll, we'll keep in touch. And uh, maybe I'll have a new one for you tomorrow. I want to wish you a great day. Bye.